Starbucks is going to be a serious problem because there is one right down the street. Um, and even though it's not technically on my way, I only have to pass it by like one minute. So, so far every day we've gotten Starbucks. Let's see if that is something we fix this year. It's also supposed to be about 90 degrees today and humid and we don't have AC. So I'm going to be a sweaty mess. Just remember this is me before school has started. Still, I'm actually already starting to sweat, but this is beforehand. Good morning. Today is day three from the classroom. We are going to do some curriculum today, meaning we are going to not do a deep dive. We're going to slowly kind of dip our toes into a little bit of phonics, a little bit of numbers, uh, beginning sounds, things like that, all while we are still teaching the routines at the classroom because it's really only day three. But I don't want to wait too long um, to like review things from last year. So when we're talking about phonics, we are reviewing letter names and sounds. For math, we are reviewing numbers one through 10. And then in writing, we're gonna talk about uh, some sentences. And then we're also gonna really go over today what we do during our wind time, which is what I need. And so we're gonna go over kind of those procedures because sometimes during wind, they'll be doing independent things. Sometimes they will be doing collaborative things. And then sometimes they'll be back at the teacher table with me. So we have some basic review activities that we're going to do to kind of practice each of those. And then each day throughout the week, students will rotate to a new section so they can practice that independent work, practice that collaborative work and practice being back at the table with me. But let me show you some of the task cards that we're going to practice. Some of them are going to be independent, some will be with a partner, um, but again they're mostly going to review things we taught last year. And I just want to really highlight here that again we're not doing a deep dive into any curriculum or any real skills. We are instead kind of uh, dipping our toe in. So we're like, this is the procedure. This is how it all works. Here, let's practice with some of these skills. I also wanted to show my weekly bins. Um, I know somebody here made a comment about like, oh, but then the papers kind of get all, you know, floppy, which is fine and normally does happen. But that is why I use folders. Um, I just hadn't yet because we weren't doing all of our subjects. And I will label these so that way subs know, but essentially Monday is leftover stuff that we are going to do if we have time fillers because there was no school. But in each of these, um, there's a folder for each subject. So this is always our morning work. We are introducing real morning work this week. We're going to use, um, this is my August one, even though it's September, but essentially we're just gonna work on rhyming. They will draw a line to the one that rhymes and then counting and writing the number. The purple folder is always going to be our reading. Today we're doing the name jar. I showed this sheet last time. I don't feel like taking it out, but um, any reading or phonics papers will go in purple. And if there's a read aloud, I'll always just have the book next to it. Blue is always going to be math and red is always going to be writing. So for example, let me just take up Wednesdays. Um, purple is our phonics. So again, we're focused on the letters T, B, and F because we are doing foundation. So I just have these find and color sheets that they will do, and then I'll put them back in order. But organizing it this way keeps all the papers so they don't get, you know, all floppy and ruined and just makes it nice and easy for me to take out. All right, so some of the things we're doing, we have win, which is what I need time. Um, so we're gonna go over like, what is win? And we're gonna talk about independent work um, and how we do things, you know, by ourselves. We can read, we might do some activities at our desks. We're gonna work collaboratively sometimes during WIN. So we might work with a partner or read with a friend or work in a group. And then we also have the teacher table. So the teacher table, we also went over like what the procedures are. And then I'm not gonna show you the next slide because it has students' names, but basically under each of the symbols here, um, students will have a name, and if they're under the collaborative one over here, they will have a partner to play with. Uh, and they're gonna practice a couple different partner games, or just, no, they're practicing one partner game, I'll show you in a sec. And then we have teacher table, and my independent friends are going to pick a book from over here. They can pick a little wobble cushion, and they can find a spot around the room to kind of sit and read. For our partner game, we have classic roll and build. We are going over all the numbers, one through 10. We're just reviewing them. I made these little anchor charts. We talked about the, uh, the number, 
the 10 frame and the number word. So I'm gonna hang these up, I think, up here. I'll start with one through 10 and it'll eventually go through 20. And then we played roll and build, which is for my number sense unit. So students will roll two dice. They will add it together, seven. They'll have to use cubes down there to build a tower of seven and they will stack it here. And they just take turns going back and forth. And then to review numbers, we played Find the Fish. Uh, this game is also in my number sense packet, but essentially I have this little fish here. And I actually, just so you know, I started with numbers just one through 10 in order. And then we moved up to one through 20 in order. And then I shuffled them all around so they couldn't rely on counting to figure out what the number was. So basically I would hide a fish behind it and I'd call students up one by one to try and find the fish. And then I had a few friends with me back at the teacher table. And so for this, I just introduced some beginning sound task cards and I kind of did it with them. So not that one, let me see. I had two friends work together to match up the beginning sound puzzles. So very simple, as you can see here, like ah, astronaut, they just matched those up. And then the other one I did, I did two other ones with a friend. This one we did find the letter. Um, and so my friend clipped the, they'd see the beginning sound, ah, they'd have to find A and clip it or circle it. And then what was the other one? Oh, this one. And then we did this one, fill in the missing letter. So moving from uh, just finding and identifying it to actually writing it on the card. And that went really well. It is the end of the day. I am not as sweaty as I thought I would be, um, but we had a great day. We talked about numbers, we reviewed a little beginning sounds, and we went over a lot more procedures. We also did this really cute thing with the name jar. I shared the sheet in my last video, but I wanna show you what it looks like completed. So we read the name jar, and then we just used some construction paper on the sheet, and then we made our name. This is my name, obviously. And then we filled out how many letters, syllables, consonant, and vowels it has. It came out really cute. All right, say hi, Theo. Hi. We got Calvin in the back there. All right, we are heading out. I'll see you tomorrow. what pre-order came in. Don't let the pigeon drive the sleigh. I don't think I'm gonna put it out with my other pigeon books yet. I'm going to save it for Christmas. So let's put that away. I still need to go ahead and make labels for all of these bins. I just already know what they are. So I'm like, do I really need labels? Probably. Today we are continuing to work on some letters. Um, we're gonna dive into foundations today and we are going to talk about T, B, and F. Um, the plan is to talk about all three. I don't know if we will because I also wanna introduce them to their new tools, their whiteboards and markers that they will use. Um, and you know, going over such procedures might take a little bit of time. So that is that plan. And then we're still gonna go back to numbers. So I gotta go. I'll pop in after school and let you know what we did. Hello, it is the end of the day. I think I only popped in for like a quick second at the beginning, but I wanna show you what we did in math because I think it went really well. So let me show you. Here are the math slides we did. So let me just open up, here we go. So here they have a little math talk. It says, how could you organize these bears to make them easier to count? So I just kind of listened to different ideas on how to count them up. Um, some people said like counting them in a row, crossing them out so you don't double count, putting them in groups which was perfect for our next slide, because then I said, yes. And then this is kind of like our explicit teaching slide where I show them we can put them in groups, we can put them in a row, we can put them in a 10 frame. And we really talked a lot about that 10 frame today. And then I took out some cubes, I just had like a bag of cubes, and I showed them how to count them using a 10 frame. And I really emphasize that when we fill up the top of a 10 frame, it's five. So we don't need to count each one. We just say five, six, seven, and so on. And then um, I'll show you the student group. So they did practice it together. They practiced it independently. And then we just had a little closing where we said, what do you think? Do you think it's easier to count them in groups and so on? So let me show you what the sheets looked like. 
So right now I'm organizing things in bins um, that they will use all week long so they can just take a whole bin over. So here you can see the bags. I filled them up with just different amounts of cubes and students took turns. They would grab a handful of cubes. So they couldn't grab all of them at one time because there's too many. So they'd grab how many they could. I would have them organize it. These were cut in half in the 10 frame first to count. If there were extra, they could count on. We, again, 10, 11, 12, practice counting on. Uh, and then they wrote the number inside the box and they did it four times. Um, four was not enough, so I had them just go again and write another numbers in the box because some of my students, it took a while, uh, but some went through this very quickly. So I just had them continue going. And then the independent work, I wanted to practice uh, cutting and gluing because we haven't done too much of that. So here they just cut out the cupcakes, the fish, and the stars. They pasted them in and then they would write the number here. So that went really well today. And then just for a new game, I already told you we did roll and build yesterday. Today we also did spin in color. This is from my uh, August, I think, August print and play math games. So again, we're just identifying numbers in the 10 frame. They would spin it with one of these spinners and then player one would color on their turn, player two would color on theirs, and they kept going back and forth until one player colored in all their crayons. All right, so that is all I'm gonna pop off today. So we mostly talked about math. Um, again, any questions or things you wanna know more about, please just drop them down in the comments and I can make a video about it. Maybe next week we'll talk a little bit more about what we're doing in phonics or reading, things like that. You can hear my voice whispering, we gotta go. All right, as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up. If you did, make sure you uh, subscribe to the video and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.